Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2023 Deep Ellum Brewing Hideaway Open brought to you guys by Lone Star Discs. We are at the Hideaway, southeast of the DFW Metroplex, but right there, amazing course, pretty new facility. There's a look at our leaderboard, Emerson Keith in the lead right now by two couple guys on his tail, Robert Burridge, not far behind rounding out that lead card. Worth noting, Chandler Kramer, not too far back, as well as Cameron Shirley and Keenan Ford, all good players. So if Emerson stumbles, there will be people there to pick up. Hole one, we're starting out with a huge hole, honestly. It's, it's a great birdie to start your round. You're going to see a lot of guys parring this hole. Doesn't have a ton of score separation, but if you were to grab a birdie, if you're anybody but Emerson, it, it would be a statement starting off your round. Big thanks to Hooligan Discs for sponsoring these drone coverages. You can check them out. They've got the Yeet and the Vibe available online. And the weather in today's round is going to be about the exact opposite of what you just watched in those flyovers. It's extremely windy, extremely cold, and it's also going to start raining on these guys if it hasn't already. Not a bad shot for Emerson. It's going to leave a low ceiling, tricky approach. It's pretty, um, pretty average. You see a lot of people ending up right at the base of those trees. Players able to tee off beside the tee pad today. There's a lot of mud. Uh, just a lot of wet conditions. Not a bad shot from Blake. Now we got Corbin. Looks to have a lot of power. That one just slightly overturned, ends up right there by Emerson, so he'll have the low ceiling approach as well. Last but not least, Mr. Burridge, who had a fantastic breakout season last year on the Pro Tour, took Simon Lazad into a playoff there in Iowa. We'll see what he can do today. He's got tons of power. Very direct line. And wow. Emerson full straddle. There you go. There's the rain coming down. Man, that is so good from him. That's what you want to do. Start start off your round with a tap in par on a hole like this. And the last thing I said to Emerson, I was actually on the property as they were starting this round and it was terrible conditions. Is I told him, pars are good today, man. Especially with a two stroke lead. You got to make them come get you. Nice upshot from Robert. Showing that ultimate background kind of a little air bounce forehand a little awkward angle for Corbin leaving him now with this 40 footer for his par yeah it seemed like a grip issue this is going to be something that players are just going to have to deal with the entire round cold conditions with a wet frisbee that's a great par putt from Blake right here on hole one. I don't think that Blake or Corbin have been in a position like this before, playing on a feature, a late lead card with, you know, some cameras present. There's sure to be some jitters. But Blake showing none of them right off the bat. Headed into hole two. This is a great hold to break down into two shots. You want to stay in the fairway. That's of utmost importance here on hole two. P players will throw a hyzer or an, a straight mid range to end up about where the drone's at here, giving yourself this low ceiling 
approach to the green. Putting the disc on the ground and sliding is typically a great play, but with these wet conditions, players are going to have to fly it all the way to the basket, making it that much tougher of a birdie. Emerson's no stranger to this course, may have played it more than any person in our field. Choosing to tee off beside the tee box here. Now it's a good shot from Emerson. Plays the hyzer, doesn't move an inch when it lands. He'll be left with good position. Now Blake. That's a great shot as well. There must be a shooting range or something nearby. We are in Texas, so there could also just be uh, a farmer or just a normal citizen. A lot of people with guns down here. Robert looks to be going more aggressive, pushing that one a little further than the other guys, but catches a bad skip and, and he'll be out of position now, forced to play either an Anheuser forehand or a big spike hyzer backhand over the trees. We'll see what he goes with. Yeah, that's good from Corbin. As long as he's not on that tree, he's definitely going to have some options, though. Emerson, first to play. I think that's a... Uh, although it's not his best effort, but... That's Emerson's course knowledge coming into play. He knew that getting in the fairway, staying in the fairway off the drive is utmost importance, just giving yourself a second shot. Yeah, good looking shot from Blake. Not into circle one yet, I don't think, but very close to the edge. See if he can hit another good putt. It's a very fast rim driver from Corbin and it was looking fantastic catches that tree drops him right about 60 feet tough one to run today and we going big hyzer from Robert as I thought he might just got to keep the height on this one definitely miss left you just can't get stuck in the trees right of that basket it's nasty in there Beautiful shot from Emerson. Doesn't get that ground slide up, so he'll still be left with a putt. But he's he's done good work from there. That's smart from Corbin. Last thing you want on a rainy, sleety, cold day is 20-foot comebackers. They'll get old. Oh. Robert out of the trees. Emerson from somewhere close to 20 feet. Great putt from him. You could hear his, his jacket, you know, it's moving as he putt. A lot of people don't like putting with the jackets on. You see people putting them on and off. Katrina, James Conrad. Um, but if you're in Texas, I think that we're just more accustomed to playing in these crazy layers with the adverse conditions that we we play with. And You know, I'm sure there's some people in Minnesota listening now that are thinking, well, we're bundled up as well, and indeed you are. I'm not trying to say that this weather or that weather is worse, but... Winter disc golf is a test of the mind. You got to be ready to bear the conditions for sure. Hole three, a lot of forehands and a lot of backhands. I think it's split about 50-50 left to right moving hole with this goalie short of the basket that attracts most Frisbees, leaving you with about a 25 to 35 foot putt for the birdie. If you can get it all the way to the basket, it's very rare. Players are rewarded with short putts.
last one. Yeah, he really did. That was an ace run. Blake. Showing that third option. It takes the gap out of play. Guarantees yourself a par. And if he's good at it, maybe that's just a play for birdie as well. For our third different line. And our first three players. And I love this right here. Oh, look at that. Onto the top shelf. You don't see it. Robert Burge. Just that left for his birdie. A little wide from Corbin. Okay. And Blake going to play first from that over the top and he's going over the top again okay inside the circle but near the edge Great shot, dude. wow incredible shot from Corbin gonna be left with a putt now Emerson this green falls away behind him getting aggressive could mean big comebacker Oh my gosh. Emerson Keith. That's what you want to show people. If you've got that lead already, just show them that you're not stopping. You're not trying to protect. You're not here to win it at six under. You're here to push it. Proper courage. Just that for the birdie. That's amazing. Great save. Yeah, indeed. Par from Blake. Excuse me, Corbin. And unfortunately, Blake taking the bogey. Going with the overhand too, which was supposed to guarantee that circle two bid. Here we are on hole four, par three. Players are going to need to navigate these trees choosing either left or right of this dark one in the middle I think a slight Anheuser flex is the optimal shot shape for this hole 324 but it plays a little bit longer it is slightly uphill plus the low ceiling means you really got to punch something Great kick from Emerson. Misses the gap well left, but not penalized for it. I believe that was his signature Frio. Mm. Robert. Yeah, it looked like he hit the Anheuser angle out of the hand. Just flexed out a little quick on him. See if Corbin can make the adjustment. I believe he is a team hideaway player. So very familiar with this course, this layout. In round one, players played a shorter layout. This is the longest layout available at the hideaway, I believe. So we're playing from the tips here, round two, final round. Yeah, you heard Blake say it. That was the line. Just a little low. Huge straddle from Corbin. Showing his flexibility. Going a little long. Giving himself a 29-footer for his par. What has Robert got now? High spike forehand. And it just didn't really hyzer back. Tricky place if that's your best option. Just a 
A running jump putt, a little bit from Blake, looks to have caught something high and, and dropped down short. Hard to tell exactly. Smart from Emerson. It just looks nasty, man. This is the stuff that you want to be in the booth watching. Not out there playing. Big putt right here for Corbin. Doesn't want to drop another. It could have been a miss or it could have been a, a wind gust as well. We were experiencing insane conditions today. Just not your normal disc golf. And that happens quick for Corbin. He'll be taking a, a double bogey. Emerson tapping in for that par. And Robert Burge as well will be taking a bogey. Just a, a battle of the mind, guys. You've been there. I've been there. back hole five right to left moving hole 257 but you're going to need to play something faster than just a 257 shot can't be a putter it must be something that skips i think you want to land your disc anywhere around here on that top shelf try and get it to jump over this little goalie landing on the next shelf it's a pretty cool hole very custom little hole in these texas woods a low ceiling skipper. Emerson going Bruins justice. And he did exactly what I said players should do. Landed it on that first plateau. Jumped over the ravine. And he'll have a park job. He showed these players how to do it now. See if Blake can... Wow, you know, that kind of got some grad, bad ground play as well. That'll be a tricky position there for Blake. Easy to push this one too straight like he just did. Really got to get it around the corner like this. Perfect. Duplicating Emerson's shot. That'll be a birdie from Robert. Yeah, it just wasn't the best skip. Maybe a little more angle than both Robert and Emerson displayed. Either way, Corbin's going to be left with just outside the circle on a green that is not friendly. Stop. Well, that's a good effort right there. Grab metal. That looked like confident bid. Not afraid. Oh my God. Never afraid. Never? No doubt. Not the purest eight footer of Robert's life, but a birdie nonetheless. And Emerson Keith is now two under in the midst of some crazy conditions while the field is going the other way. Nearly every single player in this field headed up. Meanwhile, Emerson continuing to head down as we head into this par four hole sixth players are just trying to get out of the forest here anything that gets them into this sunlight as you can see is going to be a great drive and they'll have dealers choice forehand backhand whatever they're comfortable with into this green plays a bit uphill with the guardian tree I think players are going to need to play this one 20 to 30 feet further than that second shot shows. So that 627, um, it's quite a bit longer. Love this forehand play from Emerson as well. Aiming at the cameraman. 
get her to fade, skip. Beautiful shot. Thank you. He plays this course as well as anyone. He's displaying it now. Robert showing is very comfortable in, in wet conditions, not displaying his disc until he's ready to throw. Oh man, that nearly redirected out of the forest. Didn't go left enough. As they mentioned, there is OB left, but that not even close to it. And it looked like he might even have a window for a standstill approach shot to get somewhere up there near the green. There we go. Unfortunate clip on the way out, but he's in the open. <laughs> That was his best shot of the day. I think that should set him up for a, for a birdie on this hole, but some confidence in the future. Blake showing you if you hit early on this hole, it is a nightmare situation. You're left just pitching out. Oh, that's a great shot from him. He'll have 150 feet to get up and down and keep a bogey the worst. That's what I was thinking. Robert does have a window for a standstill approach. Hard to tell exactly where that one landed. Corbin, backhand spike hyzer. And I did not see where that landed, y'all. We'll see him putt here in a second. Love this forehand, forehand play from Emerson on this hole. Aims it at the OB. Drifts it over the top. 16 feet left for his birdie. That's how you play the hole. Wow, Robert, okay. Kind of a tricky little position. Does well with it, though. Blake right about 150. Is this a bid? Ooh. Look good. Blake's displayed a bunch of touch today. I'm, I'm impressed with his game. I like the way he hit that putt on hole one as well. That one gets away from Corbin just a bit. He may be dealing with a cold hand, unable to get the proper amount of spin on that disc to get it to fly. Emerson now for another birdie. Back to back on five and six, three under on his round. Yeah, not a ton of spin on that disc. I'm gonna conclude that that's probably due to these crazy conditions that we're witnessing. Unfortunate bogey for Blake as well. Nearly everybody in the field, as I mentioned earlier, going the other way of Emerson Keith. He's headed south. They're heading north. Hole seven now. Tricky par four. It's only 446 feet. A high Anheuser backhand plays great for the tee shot on this hole. But you're going to have almost a different approach every time you play it. A good drive sets you up with a short second shot. It'll most likely be a standstill putter. It all comes down to the tee shot here. A good one, the birdie's easy. A bad one, the bogey is hard. You can see doubles, triples even on this hole. And this is too straight. Well, it gets away with it. He'll have a gap 10 to 15 feet away from him that he'll have to hit on that second shot. So, Some work left for Emerson Keith. I, I like this backhand, but that is high from Robert. Didn't hear anything. If that didn't hit anything, that could be so far down there. 
Great shot from Blake. Dead center fairway. This is too straight from Corbin. But like Emerson, kind of gets away with it. Definitely a scramble approach from here, but wow. You're looking at a three-foot gap 20 feet away from you. And that's almost the worst when you barely nick it, kicks you even further sideways. You'd almost rather miss it by six inches and square that tree up. Okay, so Robert was high off the tee. Tricky position. He'll have that left to get up and down for par. That may be a birdie putt for Corbin. Great standstill angle there. Dedicated himself to the angle, held it till the end. Oh, yeah. Beautiful hole from Blake. Played a forehand skip shot. Forehand skip shot. Broke it down. Not a terrible place for Emerson to approach. Just pitching it up there for his par. Okay. So this is a birdie attempt for Corbin. Oh, fantastic birdie here on hole seven. <laughs> Grabbing his first of the day. It's got to feel nice. And a birdie from Blake as well. He played that thing textbook. Beautiful hole from him. Be interesting to see how much confidence that gives these guys headed into the back nine. Here we have. All right, over the top from Blake. Didn't work great last time. But that seems fantastic, way down there. Pretty center cut. Corbin. Going with that forehand left of the intended line, but gets away with it. <laughs> he says that was nasty. Now Emerson. Also going with that forehand. And this rain really coming down now. Interesting thing about this day is it started out at 60 degrees and then slowly dropped about 5 to 10 degrees per hour. These guys teeing off at about 2 o'clock, so it is cold, it is wet. These tea box, these tea boxes are Ooh. muddy. Robert really wanted to see where that one was heading. I did as well. It looked fantastic. Get some forward advancement. Corb, excuse me, Blake, just a little tight on that one. Now Emerson. No. Yes. No. <laughs> the no, yes, no. That's such a good place to be after your drive. Emerson knows. Let one out there. Go in. Unbelievable. All right, so Corbin going to be back-to-back -back birdies. He's shown some resilience, some fight. Do it. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Blake nearly rung one of these up earlier, showing that he is so capable. 
with that little forehand touch game. Amazing from Blake. Thanks for the replay, GK. Emerson nearly grabbing a birdie even after that errant approach shot. Robert satisfied with the <laughs> just laying that one up. Look at this breeze right now. Emerson taking this one serious. Yeah, gusty conditions. Great putts from those guys. That 12 footer is not easy. Par from those guys, all losing a stroke to Mr. Milcheski. Back to back birdies and another rope job to start his ninth hole. Oh my goodness, that one's so close to getting around the corner. He'll have a chance for another birdie. If you get yourself 325 feet down this fairway, wow. <laughs> you saw his eyes. What a great scoot job right there from Blake on this wet, muddy day. Not really seeing much scooting. This is Emerson's signature Frio right here. Oh my goodness, and that is a crazy slip. Unfortunate for Emerson. You saw how much that affected his throw. Robert, nearly identical to Emerson. Only difference was Emerson's actually floated back another 25 feet, so he's just got to be thinking about the par at this point. And there's a lot, and I mean a lot of work left to do to achieve that par. Let's see what Robert can do. Guessing a flex shot down the fairway. He was going to cut roller, I think. If he got himself to the elbow, he'll have an approach at the green. This hole can become so hard with an errant tee shot. Look at that. Deflects off the tree. Continues to roll. And he'll need to get up and down there just to keep it at a bogey. Emerson was playing clean until this point. Three under on his round. Robert, about 260 from the, the pin. And wow. 250 from the pin. Now, not much easier. Maybe a bit wider gap there on the left. These are small, small fairways that these players are hitting. Wow, so good from Robert, and that'll be a bogey. Keeping it at a bogey, though, that's a deep breath from him. And that was from where Corbin landed on his drive, I believe. So this is now his third. Headed at the bucket fast. Oh my goodness, terrible. Little skip behind that tree now. Birdie almost essentially out of play after nearly ringing, uh, par, excuse me, after nearly ringing up the birdie from 250. Wow, and Emerson Keith. It's looking like it could be a double, maybe worse if he doesn't put a tourniquet on that. And that's about the fifth or sixth shot that we've seen from this group that traveled less than 20 feet before making contact with the tree. Showing us how hard it is to play these woods with a cold hand and wet conditions. So good with that disc.
Emerson. A soft bid there, looking for a little more Anheuser, and I believe that's going to be a putt for a double bogey. Luckily for him, none of his card mates really playing that well. And at this point, I think it is Chandler Kramer from Chase Card who's moved up into the second place position. Great putt from Emerson Keith, though. After all that chopping, nearly turning himself into a lumberjack on that hole. He's hit a good putt. He can move on. He still has the lead. Let's see how he rebounds from that as we head into that final nine. Oh my goodness. That was crazy. That, that's some cold, wet chains right there. Beautiful look at this property. And these guys' cards. A lot of colors present. Emerson Keith, blemish-free until that ninth hole, taking the double bogey, unfortunately. But none of the card playing that one clean. He has the lead by four on the card. Let's take a look at the full leaderboard. And indeed, the lead is only three now. Chandler Kramer from the chase card making this thing interesting. You guys will have to come back for this back nine to see how things finish. Once again, this is the 2023 Deep Ellum Brewing Hideaway Open brought to you guys by Lone Star Discs. Big thanks to Hooligan Discs as well for sponsoring this coverage. We'll see you guys on that back nine. For Luke Humphreys and GK Pro, thanks for watching.